Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I have a very quick project today and this one is actually for myself. Uh, we have a boomerang pillow that needs a new cover. Even though we can purchase covers for about eight or ten dollars from the shop, I really want to make my own. So let's go and make a cover for a boomerang pillow. I have two pieces of fabric here that measures 44 by 34 inches lay them nice and evenly over the top of each other and then what we need to do this is going to be a bit difficult to see with the camera overhead like this but we'll take this corner here then we're going to create a diagonal fold like this so we're going to bring this corner up all the way to the top of our fabric and because it's not square it's not going to fold into a perfectly squared triangle you're going to have some fabric left over on the side like this and we do actually want this so bring the two pieces of fabric up together until the straight edge here meets the straight edge of the other side of your fabric so what you're doing is creating a fold in your fabric with a 45 degree angle just make sure you've got no lumps and bumps in that we've got this corner of our fabric brought all the way up to the top it's in line with the top edge of our fabric it just goes out into a point here and along this side we've got the four layers of fabric and we've got excess in the two layers at the back there you'll have your fabric nice and even on the diagonal here and that will go all the way down to the bottom here it's just going to have a nice straight rectangle along this side so I hope you can make that out on the fabric from this folded edge here we're going to come in and measure across 31 inches and if you have a straight ruler you can just make a couple of marks along here and join up the line this is really just going to be a reference line so from the folded edge over to the raw edge here I've got 31 inches marked and if you start at this marking just here where the raw edges are we'll come in 16 inches just mark a line here from this 16 inch mark here we're going to make a couple of more marks just to help us draw the curve so I'll do a mark one and a half inches four inches six and a half inches and eight and a half inches so we've got one and a half four six and a half eight and a half you can keep on going if you want to it's not really necessary this is just to help form a, the shape of the curve from that reference line mark half an inch from the next mark three quarters of an inch so we've got half an inch three quarters of an inch then we'll do one and a quarter inches here and two inches there and the last reference line will be at 11 and a half inches from this first mark from there we can come down four inches and just make a mark on the very edge of the folded section of fabric now from this fold here we're going to draw a curved line coming up and around and meeting up with this 16 inch mark here And I have no artistic talent whatsoever, so I'm hopeless at drawing curves. But you get the idea. Come back to the beginning here, and using that straight edge that you've marked earlier, we're going to measure 15 and a half inches from the top and draw a line going straight down. So just line up your ruler with the straight edge along here, and I'll mark 15 and a half inches, which ends just there and then I'm going to draw a straight line going straight across I'm doing all of these lines just to give me some guidelines as to where I'm going to do my curves I'm going to use one of the straight edge markings on the ruler and line that up with the drawn line and that'll give me a nice square edges just mark a line straight across there so we've got a rectangle marked with a curve at one side we now need to mark a curve on this side and that curve needs to come down slightly from the drawn line just here on the fold line up the ruler at that drawn line and come down 18 inches and mark a line there 
you can see that is just below about an inch or so below this straight line that we've got drawn here at this point here we just want to mark a curve and bring that in so just freehand and this is now going to be our cutting line along here and then straight across we don't want to cut this section just yet because we need to extend the pillow slip so what we've got here now are two curves coming along out here this drawn line here will become the end of the pillow slip on one side and at the other end we need to have some fabric folded over and that's why we've got this excess piece here so if you take your ruler and from this drawn line here line up the straight edge and I've got seven inches marked just here and that lines up with the straight line that we've got I'm going to come out and extend that line by seven inches so that comes straight out here and we'll do the same at the top the seven inch line with that drawn line that we had earlier and then just come straight out and then we can join this up so we have our two layers of fabric with this section here folded over and we've got an extension of fabric here this extension will be the fold over flap so that the pillow can actually tuck inside so this is now ready to be cut out i'll start at this section here and continue to cut through all the four layers here then we'll cut around to the curve okay so I've marked out the basic shape of the pillow slip here I've still got to straighten this up but I don't want to cut through those two layers of fabric at the back all I've done is pinned this section here the top two layers just move the back ones out of the way and then I can straighten up this line okay now we have the shape of our cushion so one side of the curve is going to be seven inches shorter than the other side of the curve what I'm going to do first on the short edge that is the shortest side of the pillow slip I'm going to just go and stitch this together with a one centimeter or a three eighth inch seam allowance so at the shortest edge of the pillow slip I've gone and closed up the end seam here we'll go and overlock all of this later as well so for now I just wanted to have a row of stitching here just so that everything is sitting together and I know which is the right and wrong side of the fabric because this one's a little bit difficult to tell take the edge of the fabric that's got the extra seven inches this is the wrong side and that's the right side so with wrong side facing up we're going to take our fabric and fold it up half an inch and then we're going to fold it up another half an inch and stitch that down and we'll do the same at the other end we've got our center seam here find the other end and we'll do exactly the same thing so we're going to fold that up twice and then we'll stitch that flat I have both ends of the long side of my fabric folded over twice and I'm going to take this to the machine and just stitch down the edge of the fold here you don't need to stitch close to the edge here we want to sew all the way down on this side here if you want to have a little decorative edge you can certainly go and sew this side as well it won't be seen later though so there's not really much point so I'll sew that down on both edges of the pillow slip here okay with the folded edges stitched in place here you can take this to the iron and press it if you want to but I can't really be bothered line up all your layers of fabric we've got the stitched end at this end make sure everything's nicely lined up on especially on the curves and we've got the right sides together so this is the right side and this facing up is the wrong side of the fabric and the wrong side is also facing down we're now going to take the edge of our fabric but we're going to take both layers of the fabric and fold that over by six inches so you'll fold both layers over it doesn't matter if this is a little bit staggered from the other one that is uh, partially due to the double fold in the fabric and also probably inconsistencies in sewing a hem so we'll measure six inches so there are my two folds folded over and we're still working with the wrong sides of our fabric I've folded this over by six inches so we can pin that in place 
at each end. And what we're going to do now is close up the entire pillow slip. This is almost finished. So we're going to start from here, go all the way along here. You can back stitch a couple of times here just to reinforce that section. Come all the way around the curve and all the way to the edge of the fabric along here. And you'll do exactly the same thing here. Start here, it doesn't matter which side you start at. Um, stitch along here, come around the curve and finish up at the end. Now I'm going to do all of this just with a regular straight stitch on my sewing machine. After I've done that I'm going to take it to my overlocker and I'll overlock all of the edges including the end here and the inside edge as well just to neaten it all up. If you don't have an overlocker or a serger you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine. Have the stitch length short. Let's take this to the machine and once we've done that the pillow slip's finished. And again I'm using a one centimeter or three eighth inch seam allowance. The whole pillow slip is completely finished now and all we need to do is neaten everything up. We have an inside curve here and we need to relax the curve a little bit. So what we'll do is just around the edge of the curve we're just going to snip the curve there before we do our zigzag or overlocking stitch and it just means that the fabric will sit nicely over the pillow instead of it looking really tight around the edge of the pillow. On the outside curve you can do the same thing. It doesn't need so much. There's actually um, some bias stretch just here so that'll go around your pillow nicely. So now that that's done I'm going to take this to the overlocker and I'll overlock my edges and if you don't have one then just go and use a zigzag. And I'll start at the top edge where the fold over is and I'll go all the way to the end, come down around the bottom and then I'll come back up the side again. If you want to have it really nice and neat on the corners of your fabric without having to cut your overlocking thread, as you're sewing, come along until the needle just gets to the very edge of your fabric. Then you can turn your work around and continue stitching and then you won't have those little loose tails hanging off at the end. If I'm coming close to the edge I'll turn my hand wheel, raise the needles, turn the fabric around, press the foot down again and continue sewing. Okay our pillow slip is completely finished. You can see the corners along here how nicely they sit. That's just a nice neat little trick you can do with your overlocker so that you don't have to tie in any excess pieces of thread. Now up at the other end we've got both layers of fabric folded over on the one side. Just stick your hand in and separate the two layers of fabric and turn your pillow slip the right way around. poke out the corners at the end. I'm not going to bother ironing this because it's a pillow slip. The force of the cushioning is going to open out the fabric nicely. And there we have both folded edges of our fabric in here on the side there. Now if you want to you, you can go and top stitch the round at the end of your pillow slip. It's really not necessary but if you feel you need to do that you can go ahead and do that as well. So you've got two folds in the end of your pillow slip here so you can choose whichever side you like to tuck your pillow into. And let's go and get our pillow. And here it is. Do you know this actually fits better on the pillow than the store-bought one? I don't know why the store-bought one has a kind of a little peak at the top but this one has turned out really well. So I'm very happy with that. Just your straight side seam at the end there and the fold over on this side here so you've got the double fold over on the inside of the pillow slip, one on this side, one on this side so it really doesn't matter. It helps keep this whole folded section really nice and neat. Very happy with that. Probably the most difficult part of making this is just working out the curves. I've done that for you, it's easy enough to follow 
and it's a very quick and simple thing to sew. So a boomerang pillow. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.